Hello everyone, my name is Preston Dennett, and the title of today's show is The Truth Behind Alien Anal Probes, an In-Depth Analysis. I know this is a controversial subject, UFOs are themselves a very touchy subject, and this is perhaps among the most sensitive aspect of UFO contact. And yet it's very serious, especially for those on the receiving end. What I find interesting about this particular aspect of UFO encounters is there's not a lot of UFO research into it. There are not a whole lot of reported cases. M many researchers won't touch the subject with a 10-foot pole. And despite this, the media has really latched onto it. It's all over the internet. It's become the butt of the joke on the internet. It's on TV, it's in movies, it's in merchandising, advertising, video games. It's all over the place. If I had a dollar for every time someone's asked me about uh, why are aliens anally probing people or, or tell me, no, I don't want to be abducted by aliens and anally probed, I'd, I'd have a huge bank account. And I get it, it's a charged subject, but really there's no excuse. Aliens are visiting our planet and what do people want to talk about? Alien anal probes? Finally, I just threw up my hands and said, fine, let's explore all avenues of UFO research and let's get to the truth of this. And that's why I did this video. Uh, what I find very interesting is that society has really reacted strongly to this. Just look at what happened to George Knapp. George Knapp became involved in UFO research in the late 1980s, early 1990s, when he began investigating the Bob Lazar case and Area 51, and he soon moved into UFO abductions and quickly learned how cruel the media can be. As George Knapp writes, one newspaper reacted to my reports about alleged alien abductions by anointing me as a high priest in the Church of Cosmic Proctology. So some researchers have looked into this, and one is Jason Colavito. In his article, Aliens and Anal Probes, he writes, The alien anal probe has become such a cliché that it now stands as a cynic doche, a symbol, for the entirety of the alien abduction experience. Why is it that aliens want to probe our butts? Or more specifically, when exactly did people start claiming that aliens gave them an anal probe? Anal probes are now such an established part of the UFO phenomena that you'd think there would be a clear answer to when the aliens started probing unwary humans. But surprisingly, no one has yet created a definitive catalog of anal probing events or timeline of when they supposedly started. Some people have looked into this. When was the first alien probe? Among them is researcher Robert Lamb. In his article, Why Didn't Ancient Aliens Probe Human Anuses? He writes, We're forced to wonder why anal probing only became such a key component of alien-human interactions during the second half of the 20th century. Did ancient aliens fail to recognize the research potential of the human anus? Did 20th century visitations entail a new alien civilization that had yet to reach the limits of what rectal probing could teach them? Another researcher who has looked into this is David Macaray. In his article, Why Would a Space Alien Probe Your Anus? He writes, Even though they are technologically infinitely superior, able to travel at velocities surpassing the speed of light, able to demolecularize themselves and use wormholes as conduits, we are asked to believe that when they finally get to Earth, their first order of business is to probe the human rectum using proctology instruments dating back to horse and buggy days. Clearly, we do have a fascination in the media with this particular aspect of the UFO phenomena. And I get it. I mean, I can see why that is. It's funny. It's a little bit gross. It's disconcerting. It's a little bit taboo. It's the perfect media story. So this is perhaps why they've really latched onto it, but it's surprising how far it's gone. I mean, just look at what's going on with television. And perhaps one good example is what's happened to Homer Simpson, who, when he was abducted by ETs, guess what? This is what they focused on. And when South Park d decided to explore the UFO phenomena, 
Karpman was taken on board, and guess what? He got probed. So this is definitely what the media has become fascinated with. And it's all over the place. So this is definitely saturating all parts of our culture. You can buy all kinds of UFO-themed memorabilia, uh, keychains, cups and glasses, all kinds of t-shirts, handbags, even a face mask. Uh, it's even got into food. For example, how about Alien Anal Probe Red Hot Sauce? The label reads, Alien Anal Probe Extraterrestrial Hot Sauce, Anal Encounters of the Fiery Kind, complete with an illustration of a pantsless man surrounded by smiling gray ETs. It's only eight ninety seven a bottle. Uh, and it's gotten into video games. The Saints Row video game was actually banned from Australia for its use of this theme. Uh, the internet has gone absolutely crazy with it. Internet trolls have made all kinds of jokes about it. Here are 15 of the top reasons why the average internet troll thinks people are being anally probed by E.T. So those are the 15 reasons why the average person thinks people are being anally probed by aliens. And yeah, it's funny. I get it. I've had a little bit of fun with this subject. Please forgive me if I've been a little bit cheeky or talked about this in a tongue-in-cheek manner. I don't mean to offend anyone. I know that this is a serious subject. So now let's move on to that, to the actual reports and see if we can figure out what's going on with this extraterrestrial excremental experimentation. Because I do have reports of people firsthand telling me that this happened to them. And I know other researchers also have received reports, but when I did a survey for it, I didn't find a whole lot of cases. The earliest case I could find was actually with Betty in Barney Hill. This aspect of their case is not written about in most accounts of their case. But researcher Walter Webb listened to the actual hypnosis tapes and found that Barney Hill did in fact have this experience. As Walter Webb writes, a cylindrical object was inserted up the rectum and once again the witness believed something was removed. Another researcher who has looked into this is David Jacobs. He's definitely a leading abduction researcher in the United States and has written a little bit about this particular aspect of the UFO contact. As Jacobs writes, and I'm quoting, After they have examined the vertebrae and back, the aliens roll the abductee onto her left side. From this position, the small beings may once again examine and feel the vertebrae. After this, they conduct a rectal examination. They use a variety of instruments, one of which resembles a wire whisk. They insert the instrument and withdraw it. When the rectal exam is over, the beings roll the woman completely on her stomach. But like I said, there aren't a lot of first-hand accounts of this. One first-hand account I did find comes from Bill Foster, an abductee who wrote about his experiences in his book, The Black Triangle Abduction. It's an excellent book, highly recommended. I was able to interview Bill Foster firsthand, and he wrote about this experience very lucidly. As Bill Foster says, Now it seems like, yes, they are turning me over on my left side. The big guy next to me is squatting down lower, still looking into my eyes. One of the grays on the far side of the table comes around to my viewing side and picks up a thing which is lying on the table. It is a rod of some sort, about 12 to 13 inches long. It is silver on three-fourths of it and black on the rest of it, a dull, flat, black color. He is going to insert that into my rear end. God, 
No wonder my buttocks are so sensitive. I can't imagine having that thing stuck up my ass. He inserts it to about what looks like a four inch depth and again leaves it there for about 10 seconds and then pulls it out. He is looking at something on the side of that tube. I don't really want to look at this. Yeah, I don't blame him. Uh, most experiencers as well do not talk about this. One who is very courageous in coming forth was Whitley Strieber, who received quite a bit of grief about it, quite a bit of ridicule, uh, which is really unfortunate because he was being honest and forthcoming about this procedure, which a number of abductees have experienced. As Whitley Strieber writes, there were clothes strewn about, and two of the stocky ones drew my legs apart. The next thing I knew, I was being shown an enormous and extremely ugly object, gray and scaly with a sort of network of wires on the end. It was at least a foot long, narrow, and triangular in structure. They inserted this thing in my rectum. It seemed to swarm into me as if it had a life of its own. Apparently its purpose was to take samples, possibly of fecal matter, but at the time I had the impression I was being raped, and for the first time I felt anger. Only when the thing was withdrawn did I see it was a mechanical device. The individual holding it pointed to a wire cage on the tip and seemed to warn me about something. But what? I never found out. Researcher Raymond Fowler has uncovered cases like this, in his book, The Allagash Four, one of the witnesses, Jack Weiner, reported this exact experience. As Jack Weiner says, I try, and I do it, but I don't feel like I'm doing what they want. And they're saying, just do it, don't be afraid. And then they're looking at me. They're putting something in me, up my ass. I'm afraid. I don't know what it is. It burns. It's like an enema. It's uncomfortable, but no... It's not so bad. They're saying it's not so bad. And so I'm saying it's not so bad. John Mack is another researcher who has looked into this particular aspect of UFO contact. He talks about the case of Peter. Writing about Peter's case, Mack writes, the most humiliating part followed as they're, quote, groping at my legs and put a tube in his rectum to take a stool sample. These guys don't know how to touch people, like get some bedtime manner. The tube was passed deeper into his rectum, and Peter felt that they left an implant or an information chip deep inside of him. Why do you have to do this to me? I feel like a tagged animal. I feel like they put something big up my anus and spread it, and then stuck something else up through it, and then they left it. It's way up inside me. Feeling defeated and humiliated now, Peter said, what pisses me off the most is that they told me they were going to do this. They held it up for me and showed me. Another report comes from an anonymous witness who writes, The real anal probe is a cylindrical device with myriad tentacles waving about, each about five inches in length, as I recall. I didn't feel anything. I wasn't aware of it until it was removed. A warning is issued after removal. I can't remember what the warning is exactly, but many abductees like myself would sincerely like to know. Another person that I actually interviewed, I'll call her Alicia, had this experience, and she asked the ETs what they were doing. She screamed at them, saying, why are you doing this? There's nothing good up there. And uh, they seemed confused and told her that they were measuring the levels of pollution in her body. And uh, another person that I interviewed who had this experience, I wrote about it in my book, Onboard UFO Encounters. His name is Joe Gardner. He had this experience when he was five years old and said, no, it wasn't pleasant at all. As he says, I felt something very cold and hard, like a rod or a cold pipe, just go up inside me. And then I blanked out again. I'm going to say the most uh, detailed encounter of all comes from an experiencer by the name of Jim Sparks. He's written a book about his experiences. What's interesting about his case is he recalls most of his experiences consciously without the use of regressive hypnosis. And uh, he had this experience and wrote about it um, in pretty good detail. As he says, some of these alien medical exams unfortunately include anal probes. Yuck, a subject I do not enjoy talking about, writing about, 
or experiencing. Of course, not everything I write about is comfortable to relive, and in this case, I feel it is necessary. I found myself face down on an examination table in tremendous pain. They had inserted a deep anal probe into me, and I could feel it churning around in my guts. I felt so miserable that I cried out, What the hell are you doing to me? An examination of your system, the alien replied. The pain is awful. You're hurting me. That Then I blacked out, said Sparks. When I regained consciousness, I found myself face up on the table, sore inside, but not in pain. Two aliens were present, and it appeared they were just finishing up their procedure. One of them said, it is necessary that you stop eating animals. Your system is overloaded with trash. Intelligence dictates that you do not have to kill to survive. Sparks was surprised by this comment. At the time, he was a huge meat eater, and everyone told him it would take an act of God to become a vegetarian. But it turned out, in this case, all it took was an act of the aliens, because following this, he stopped eating meat. Precisely 30 days after this experience, he was taken on board again and had another alien colonoscopy. As he says, they were poking and prodding me, and I hated it. He shouted at them, Damn it! Why are you doing this again? I stopped eating meat. The ETs replied, We know. We had to make sure it was helping you, and it is. Um, Sparks was sore afterward, but years later, his diet still remains largely vegetarian. As he says, I have met many fellow abductees, and the bulk of them are vegetarians. I find that odd, don't you? I know this has been a weird subject to explore, but I felt like it was important because people are having the, this experience, and I'm sure they want to know what's going on. And uh, I did a big study of these cases, all the ones I could find. I wrote about it in my book, Not From Here, Volume 3. And uh, what I found is that there are different theories to explain this. One theory is that people are being implanted. I'm not convinced that's what's going on here because the implant procedure seems to be different. There's another theory that perhaps uh, the ETs are collecting genetic material. Again, I feel like that's a completely different procedure. One theory comes from researcher Zen Benefiel. In his book, Alien Agendas and Anal Probes, he speculates that the purpose of the probe is to wake people up spiritually by igniting their kundalini. As he writes, the simple science regarding the alien probe is that the sphincter is an endpoint, as well as the genitals of the perineum nerve, which according to the ancient arts, is the path of the kundalini serpent fire when it is ignited. So we can ignite this fire with practice, and it can be accelerated by procedures. Uh, one witness I think has really hit upon the true purpose. As this witness writes, they're collecting bacterial samples. It's for their genetics and food research. Don't take it personally. I think that really sums it up nicely. Really, it's just a clinical medical procedure. It's a colonoscopy, very much like what we do in doctor's offices. While there are many theories, I think the obvious and the most simple one is that this is a colonoscopy and that ETs are simply examining humans. They seem to be very interested in examining people, interested in all things human, and this appears to be just a simple colonoscopy one of many procedures that are performed on board UFOs. So that's why I wanted to do this video, so that people who've had this experience know that there are other people out there, and to sort of <laughs> chide the media for not taking this more seriously, because it, it, it is, in fact, a very, very serious subject. So that's it for now. Thanks once again for listening, and keep having fun.